everyone. Welcome to the Self-Healing Communities podcast, where every week we give you a deeper understanding of the neurobiology of trauma, healing, and human resilience. This podcast is put on by the Self-Healing Communities of the Greater Michiana region. The Self-Healing Communities of Greater Michiana's mission is to nurture personal and community well-being through the neuroscience of human resilience and the celebration of our collective strengths. This is episode five, where we will be discussing the history of realizing ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, were significant in the community, and why our guest believes ACEs are a necessary part of the conversation for health. We will have Kimberly Green-Reeves, the Executive Director of Community Impact for Beacon Health Systems, which is the outreach division for all the hospitals, join us as our guest. Stay tuned. Today, we have Kimberly Green-Reeves, the Executive Director of Community Impact for Beacon Health System, which is the outreach department for all the hospitals. And we will be talking about ACEs in the community and why they are so important when thinking about health. Welcome, Kimberly. Hey there. It's a pleasure to be here. So how did Beacon come to realize that ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, were an important factor to look at for health? In 2012, we had an opportunity um, to do a community health needs assessment, which uh, is mandated by the Affordable Care Act. And so it gives us an opportunity as a healthcare system to really understand at our core what the needs are uh, throughout our region. And for us, we were looking at that time at St. Joseph County. And um, upon doing the needs assessment, uh, we were very intentional to ask the ACEs questions that you can find in Dr. Anda and Dr. Folletti's uh, research. And in doing so, we understood that our community um, had ACEs. And it wasn't enough just to know that they existed, but we needed to be able to address those needs and meet people uh, in a place where they could understand what it meant to be resilient and figure out a role or figure out the role that Beacon played in that. And so from there, our uh, director at the time, Margo DeMont, went to California to meet with Dr. Folletti at Kaiser Permanente and learn a little bit more about uh, his research and the studies, as well as the ways that he engaged with his patients. It was upon that visit there that she also understood that Dr. Anda had an opportunity to be trained in ACEs and that we could bring that back here to the community and offer that to uh, different stakeholders and leaders to be able to share that information on what adverse childhood experiences are and the impact that it has on the individual. And so we began at that point training 10 individuals, and they ranged from venues, parks, and arts. We had city officials. We had school superintendents. We had uh, healthcare leaders, and uh, it was a great journey. And from there, we just continued our work that we educated the community, but it was just simply around what ACEs were. It acknowledged the fact that ACEs existed, but it really didn't give good a good line of sight into what's next, mm-hmm. right? And so um, as our work continued as Beacon to really understand the impact of ACEs and, and how we would address them, we knew that we needed to do something a little bit more. And so um, part of that was one, continuing to train different leaders in the community on ACEs to expand our work. At that time, we also expanded as an organization. We were now responsible for not only Memorial Hospital, but Elkhart General Hospital in Elkhart County. And so um, we wanted to have some different leaders also aware of this work. And then we also began a conversation about what self-healing communities is. That was important because it gave us answers as to now that we acknowledge that ACEs exist and that we're aware, we can move along this spectrum of becoming trauma sensitive and really changing the ways in which we show up at work, not only in a social service setting with our community partners or politics and and legislation for our local municipalities, but then, and even in our school systems, but more importantly in healthcare, it was a shift for us because we understood that it was the acute trauma that someone exists. Mm 
or that someone experiences? What are the other traumas that we tend to shy away from because we're not certain um, how to handle that? And so when someone comes into our hospitals, how are we more sensitive to how we're approaching them? you know, to, to provide the best care possible? How are we responding differently? And so we began to question the ways in which we delivered care. Mm -hmm. And then how are we then from there trauma informed by looking at different policies and things that we can do as a healthcare system? Mm -hmm. And if we were going to do that for ourselves, then what did that mean to do it for the community? Mm -hmm. And so at the time, Laura Porter, who is a uh, partner with Dr. Anda, did a article on self-healing communities. It was commissioned by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. And so we took that as a blueprint on um, the work that we can do. And we convened a small group at our offices at Community Impact to really begin the conversation. And that is how our journey began and why we think it's important to the work. One is because we identify the need. Two, because we establish a, a strategy to address that need. And we feel that not only being aware of ACEs, but also being able to put valuable tools and resources in place to ensure that we can deliver the best care possible around the self-healing communities is a capacity model that we can get behind. Yeah, that's amazing. A question that I have from that is, how did you choose the original group of people to get ACEs trains, like parks and venues and just all these different sectors? Yeah, how did you build that those relationships with those people? Or were, were you intentional about who you were training, I guess, at that time? Yeah, great question. And so, yes, we were intentional. And I, I will say, um, for the first time that we did it, ACEs was a new a, a new language. It was yeah. a new, it was it was new in our in our repertoire, and it wasn't something that we were using on a consistent basis. And so, the first group was the was the willing, uh, those that were interested in learning more and willing to look at how they provided services or delivered care differently. Mm -hmm. And that's how the first group uh, really began. And we had an application process, and mm -hmm. we looked for individuals that uh, were committed to the work. And based on that, that's how they were able to move forward. The second time we went through with it, we were more intentional to identify um, individuals. And at that time, we decided to go after all of the school districts in our uh, region, because we felt like we wanted to figure out a way to make a deeper impact. Yeah. And what's a great way to do that is to um, identify organizations or vessels, if you will, that have a captive audience and get behind this effort and uh, start to move the needle on becoming a self-healing community. They, at that time, the schools identified who they felt were going to be best, and we were excited to have them along with us for that second round. Why do you, as Kimberly, believe it is so important to have ACEs as part of the conversation when we think about health in general or building a healthy community? Yeah, yep. As a healthcare practitioner, what is so fascinating um, about ACEs and at the same time, it's, it's disheartening on one hand, but fascinating on the other. This disheartening part is that 10 ACEs that were studied were believed to be preventable and things that we can help to mitigate, um, maybe not completely, you know, make it so that ACEs don't exist, but certainly become a buffer to those the toxic stress that someone might encounter. And I felt like we have a responsibility to be able to do that. And when we think about the implications and the impact that it has on someone's overall health and wellness, you know, it could go a long way can go a long way and, and unfortunately can be detrimental and sometimes fatal. Mm -hmm. And so we have a responsibility that once you know better, can certainly put things in place so that people can have an opportunity to achieve their full optimal uh, mm -hmm. level of health in the way that everyone else does. And so it, it takes me back to that whole idea around health equity mm -hmm. and how do you ensure that everyone has an opportunity to live a life that is full. And so when we think about that, we think about life expectancy and the quality of life that someone has 
And so ACEs impacts that. And so I feel that it's important to be able to get on the other side of that. Fascinating on the other side of it, because it's a paradigm shift for the way that we deliver care in the healthcare system. It's a paradigm shift in the way that someone delivers services from a social service agency or how someone engages with a child, you know, at school and or at the factory that they're working with. Um, and it has the ability to absolutely save a life, right? You know, we think that in our field, right, that there are people for that. There are doctors that save lives, but we can all have a part in that right? We can all have a part in that. And so once, you know, I understood that for me personally, and then um, not only can I do something, but, you know, in my circle of influence, I have an opportunity to let everyone know that they are experts in their own right, and they can all contribute to this. Um, and we can all save a life, just does something. It gives you goosebumps, you know, when you think about that. And so why not be a part of it? And then when you have um, models, you know, of different different cities and states getting behind that. Right here, right? The state of Michigan has a wonderful ACES coalition, Indiana, right now, uh, right here in our hometown. They have a coalition as well um, in the state of Indiana. And Washington did a fabulous job. And so why not us, mm -hmm. right? And, and so I just believe that God puts us in places at the right time. And this is our time to be, to make a difference. That's so beautiful. Yeah. And it just goes back to the mission statement that it's like a celebration of our collective strengths, bringing to the table everything that we are um, to build this self-filling community. So that's right. Thank you so much, Kimberly. You're welcome, Karina. It was a pleasure. So today we explored the history of ACEs in our community and why ACEs are a critical part of the story when thinking about health and well-being. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Please make sure you're taking care of yourself and others today, and we will see you in the next episode. Just a reminder that this is sponsored by the self-healing communities of the greater Michiana region. And if you have any more questions or want more information, please follow us at SHC Michiana or email us at selfhealingcommunities at gmail.com. And we would like to say thank you to Fabrice for providing the intro and outro music. Thank you. Thank you.